Have you ever wondered how much citric acid is in lemons? Have you ever wondered how much base, sodium hydroxide, is in Drano? We encounter acidic and basic materials every day, and their concentrations are incredibly important to determine whether they will help you or harm you. Titration is a common method to determine how much acid or base is found in a material. Titrations are a quantitative analytical technique to measure the concentration of an analyte. Suppose you want to measure the amount of base, magnesium hydroxide, in milk of magnesia. The analyte is the magnesium hydroxide and the milk of magnesia is the sample matrix. You can react your analyte with a standard acid solution, which is a very carefully prepared solution with a known concentration. This solution of hydrochloric acid is prepared to make a 1 molar concentration. The key component of this analysis is knowledge of the chemical reaction that will take place between the standard and the analyte. One mole of magnesium hydroxide, a strong base, reacts completely with two moles of hydrochloric acid, a strong acid. You'll need a way to measure the volume of the standard hydrochloric acid solution you plan to react with your base. A burette is commonly used. You'll also need a way to determine when all the magnesium hydroxide in the milk of magnesia has been completely reacted. One way to know when your acid and base have been completely reacted is by adding a pH indicator. These are molecules that have one color in an acidic solution and a different color in a basic solution. For example, bromothymol blue is blue in basic solutions with a high pH and yellow in acidic solutions with a low pH. When the acid and base have completely reacted with each other, the pH of the solution is neutral, so the bromothymol blue will be a color mixture of yellow and blue. There are many different indicators that can be selected specifically for the titrations you wish to perform. For example, phenethylene can be used to detect an endpoint with a basic pH, and methyl red can detect an endpoint with an acidic pH. We'll want to be sure we pick the right indicator for the reaction we're attempting to measure. Now that we have a strategy for detecting the endpoint of our titration, that's the point when all the unknown base is reacted with the standard acid, we can begin our measurement. Place the titrant, that's the standard acid, in the burette and record its initial volume to the nearest hundredth of a milliliter. The concentration of the acid is 0.6764 molar. Now we'll put a known amount of our analyte, in this case 5 milliliters, in an Erlenmeyer flask, add some water to increase the volume, Place a few drops of the bromothymol blue in the flask, and we're ready to titrate. At first, we can add the titrant quickly. As we near the end point of the titration, we'll start adding the titrant dropwise. We can also split the drops to ensure we don't go past the end point. Now we'll record the final volume in the burette to see how much acid we added to completely react the base. If we ended the titration with a volume reading 17.14 milliliters and started with a volume reading 7, we've dispensed a total of 10.14 milliliters of 0.6764 molar hydrochloric acid. Remember, molarity equals moles divided by liters. Now solve the equation for x. We can see that 0.006859 moles of hydrochloric acid reacted with the magnesium hydroxide. Now that we can solve for the moles of acid required to react with magnesium hydroxide, we can use stoichiometry and our balanced equation to calculate the moles of base in the milk of magnesia. We started with 5 milliliters of milk of magnesia. Now we know that the 5 milliliter volume had 0.003429 moles of magnesium hydroxide. So we can figure out the amount of base in a 5 milliliter volume. 
we can see that the milk of magnesia contains about 200 milligrams per 5 milliliters, or for a 30 milliliter dose, 1,200 milligrams per dose. The technique isn't challenging to execute. Now here's a sample for you to try. What was the molar concentration of sodium hydroxide? Using acid-base indicators to inform you of the endpoint of titration is convenient, but it's not the most precise method to detect an endpoint. Using a pH meter has the advantages of portability and convenience, and it's an incredibly precise way to detect the exact point when all the bases reacted with the titrant. The analyte has a high pH because it's a basic solution. When we start adding the acid, the pH will decrease. At first, the pH changes very slowly. Then, near the equivalence point, the pH changes very quickly with only small volumes of added titrant. The endpoint is the steepest point of the curve or more accurately, the inflection point in the sigmoidal curve. For a strong acid and a strong base, the endpoint of the titration occurs at pH 7, and we can find the titrant volume very precisely from the graph. With applications in industry, pharmaceuticals, construction, and environmental science, knowledge of acids, bases, and titrations will be a powerful tool in your analysis toolbox.